Syracuse University is a national powerhouse when it comes to men's collegiate lacrosse. Since NCAA lacrosse began in 1971, they've played in the national championship game 16 times, winning 11 of them. Like most collegiate sports programs, Syracuse has instituted that there is an expectation that their players will complete off-season training and conditioning. These exercises are important to coaches so that they can ensure their team members stay physically fit for the start of the season. All players take part in and push each other to undergo this training. They understand the purpose of the activities they are assigned throughout the offseason. To ensure that the members of the team took their offseason assignments seriously, at the beginning of the preseason, Syracuse coaches would administer the 440 test and players could not practice with the team until they passed the test. The 440 test consists of four sprints in which the players run the length of the field back and forth. Since the field is 110 yards in length, the number of yards for each test equals 440 yards, hence the name. Players must complete three reps of the sprints within certain time limits, with a short break between each repetition. The first set must be completed in 63 seconds or under, the second set in 68 seconds or under, and the third set in 72 seconds or under. This hard work has proved not just useful, but necessary to the success of the program. In the 2009 NCAA Championship game, where Syracuse was going up against Cornell. Syracuse fell behind early in the game and tried with little success to break through Cornell's tough defense, which was one of the best in the country. Cornell controlled the tempo of the game and looked to be on their way to their first national championship in over 30 years. As the game continued on, the momentum began to shift and it became clear that the Syracuse players could push themselves harder than their opponents. They began to beat Cornell players down the field and finally found ways to get through their initially impenetrable defense. A Syracuse assistant coach observed this when midfielder Matt Abbott ran off the field completely exhausted. To his surprise, a few minutes later, Matt claimed he was nearly 100% and ready to go back again rushing back out to the field. Their meaningful work during the offseason paid off for the Syracuse players when they needed it the most. Syracuse scored two goals in the final three minutes of the game, including a dramatic goal with four seconds left to send the game into overtime. It was at that point that Syracuse rode their momentum to victory, scoring quickly in overtime and securing the 11th national championship in the school's history. Leaders delegate projects and assignments on a daily basis, which means it's important that they are thoughtful and deliberate about what they ask their people to do. If a leader distributes assignments to their people without putting any thought or effort of why they are asking them to do these things, all they'll accomplish is wasting the time of their people. Once people realize they are given assignments that their leaders do not follow up on and do not care about, they lose all motivation to complete their work. Delegation, when done well, gives opportunities for people working under the leader to grow and develop. People want to be counted on and not just given busy work. This avoidance of busy work by leaders creates trust between individuals and effective follow-up relies on that bond. Even if it is difficult, when people realize that the work they are doing is important to the organization, they will be motivated to do their best. The way to ensure this is through deliberate leadership. I understand that if you walk into a break room and see people doing nothing, it can seem like the right thing to do to assign your people to any kind of busy work, just to make sure that they are not wasting their time. In the end, this haphazard way of delegating will be counterproductive for the organization overall, because your people know that they are then working just to work, as opposed to actually accomplish anything. You need to have a good understanding of the work that needs to be done and also what kind of work would be beneficial for your people to do. Put some thought into the assignments you give your people. And almost just as important is that you follow up on what you assign. There's a fine line between following up and micromanagement, so just make sure that you are careful about how you go about following up. You want to make sure that your people know that their work is valued without having them think that you're watching over their shoulder. If done correctly, the way that you assign tasks to your people will not only create a stronger organization, but also a relationship of trust and respect between you and your people. All right, scholars, I have a challenge for you from today's lesson. I want each of you to answer the question, could you explain to your people if asked how their assignments are important? Do you explain it to them? Make sure you put your answer in the comments so that we can all learn from each other. All right, till next time, keep on learning. Thank you for watching. Much of what I go over in my lessons can be found in my book, Mission First, People Always, which is available for purchase through the link in the description of the video. If you enjoyed today's video and want to watch more leadership lessons, then be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.